Hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys the truth about Charlotte Tilbury's new magic serum. This is a serum that has recently started becoming promoted through Charlotte Tilbury's media channels because this is an extension of her magic cream or magic skincare kind of line. So we're going to talk about all of the ingredients in this serum that I don't think are beneficial in the long term and why I think unfortunately this isn't a serum that I'm going to be purchasing anytime soon and perhaps maybe this information will help you make a good decision on whether you'll purchase the serum or not. So like I mentioned, Charlotte Tilbury does have some skincare in her line. I have tested a couple of the products in the past. The first one I'll talk about is actually the Goddess Ritual. The first step is like a citrus kind of cleanser. So it's very citrusy in smell. So right away, you kind of think, okay, is there fragrance or essential oils kind of in the citrus realm that will be in this cleanser? And the answer is yes. So there are a lot of companies that will say that citrus brightens the skin. And although it may, there's also studies showing that it irritates the skin like crazy. So that's another thing to kind of consider. I am one personally that does not get extremely irritated right off the top. So there are a couple people that have kind of told me in the past, how can you suggest not purchasing an item if you don't actually test it? For me, I feel like it's a similar concept. If you know that you're allergic to strawberries, you're not gonna go buy a strawberry smoothie and test it to see if it works, like if you're actually allergic. <laughs> if you're irritated towards essential oils, you're not gonna test it and see. Like you don't wanna put your skin through that unnecessary stress. I am for sure sensitive to lavender oil. I know that already. My skin just lights up like a Christmas tree. But for other ones like citrus essential oils, no, there is no immediate reaction. But because of what I've been learning with long-term studies being done on the skin, essential oils, especially citrus ones, can promote skin irritability over time and can give you skin concerns over time. So essentially, if you're using something and you're not getting a reaction right away, you may not know, but deep down in the skin, there might be something developing that you'll only see later on. So that's why for me, I prefer to not have essential oils in my skincare anymore and certainly no perfume or fragrance. So now going back to the two-step ritual from Charlotte Tilbury. The first step being the citrus cleanser. So we do have at the very bottom some citrus essential oils. We also have fragrance and get this, normally some companies will get away with fragrance being at the very bottom and being like, oh, it's only like less than 1%, blah, blah, blah. So that's just gonna depend on how strict you wanna be with fragrance. If it's way at the bottom, you know there's not a ton, right? There's bergamot peel, which is a straight fragrance. There's fragrance in the middle of the ingredient list. <laughs> like, you know there's a significant amount of added fragrance if it's in the middle. There's also citrus lemon peel oil kind of towards the middle as well. So that just goes to show there's citrus oils at the bottom, there's citrus oils in the middle, and there's fragrance in the middle as well. The top ingredient here is glycerin, that's okay, things like that. But the reality is there is some potential irritants in this cleanser, so I've decided to no longer use it. The second step of this cleanser is called the purifying charcoal cleanse. So this is step two. Isn't so bad upon first kind of glance. We have niacinamide, which is awesome, water, glycerin, citric acid, those are awesome. But then you get down again to midway where you see fragrance, just the word fragrance in there. So you know there's added fragrance in there. Then there's the bergamot peel oil again, lemon peel oil again, and the rest of the citrus essential oils at the bottom. That just goes to show this is a heavily fragranced product, both steps of it, not just added fragrance, but essential oils too, which makes it doubly potentially irritable to the skin. Now, I know a ton of you love the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. Here is where I kind of stand with it. So there are some people that use it as a moisturizer and there's some people that use it as a primer. I've used it as a primer in the past. I've never used it as a moisturizer because A, it's really, really expensive for that. That's just plain and simple. But two, it does have some ingredients in it that I wouldn't prefer to put it in a daily regimen. Looking at this one, this isn't too too bad. The added fragrance term is not in the magic cream ingredients, which I like and I prefer. <laughs> but it also has the rose fruit oil. This is something that also has been proven to be irritable to some people, so a highly irritable essential oil. You may be fine with rose. Like, like I said, this might be personal preference and you might be all right, but there's definitely some studies that show otherwise that it is fairly irritable, just like the citrus oils. So there is a rose oil in the magic cream, and then when you 
you go further down, we also have the citrus essential oils once again at the very, very bottom. So in very small percentages, but still present in the cream. As a consumer, this makes me kind of irritated because I do feel like the hyaluronic acid that's in it, the shea butter that's in it, these are great ingredients. <laughs> it just bothers me when they just dump extra crap in it. If you want skincare that's actually amazing and the skincare that I currently use, I do have a video called the skincare must haves and a lot of it's medical grade, but there are some things from Sephora that I still purchase and would recommend. When it comes to using the magic cream as a primer, I do it on and off because I know that it's just gonna be on the skin for a limited amount of time. But I have found that used as a primer, it's not so out of this world where I think that there's not other products that will do a similar job to the skin. In fact, there's other primers that I love even more than that one, so I rarely grab the magic cream at all. And let's talk about the magic serum that has yet to be released. There are some interesting things where she's advertising for this and highlighting certain ingredients that kind of are a little concerning. <laughs> and there's other things in the ingredient list that I don't like about the product either. So this is something that I am not going to be testing or purchasing to be honest with you, because like I said, if I want to avoid certain ingredients and I can see an ingredient list, I don't have to test it to know I don't want it. So just looking at the website, Charlotte calls this the Magic Serum Crystal Elixir. It says here it is a supercharged secret to your skin's best future. <laughs> a clinically proven hydrating serum for youthful looking skin. Then it has a sign up there for like being the first to know when it becomes live. One thing that I believe Charlotte has done well is actually post the ingredient list before actually posting the product live. To me, that's responsible. I think that a consumer can then review the ingredients and especially if they have any allergies or sensitivities currently, or they're wanting to avoid certain ingredients altogether like myself, then they can review that so they don't have to actually waste their money on buying it and realizing it's not a good fit. When it comes to how she is advertising for this, now this is interesting. It talks about younger looking skin, right? It says golden vitamin C for a brighter looking complexion. Now when I'm looking at the ingredient list, I'm trying to find where vitamin C is because this is something that to me, vitamin C has got to be up there in the ingredient list. If you're gonna promise brighter looking skin, I feel like the concentration of vitamin C has got to correspond to that. And I'm looking, 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 and I finally see it and it's way at the bottom. Azorbic acid is the name for vitamin C and it's way at the bottom. <laughs> like one, two, three, four, five, six. So the seventh from the bottom ingredient and there's easily like 50 plus ingredients in here. Interesting, right? Like how she's promoting the vitamin C as an active ingredient in it when it's really close to the bottom of the list. So I don't know how much brightening one is going to get, but looking at some of the ingredients that she does have that are fantastic, like niacinamide, which is vitamin B3, it is fantastic at minimizing pores, really giving that youthful kind of blurred look, and that's ingredient number two. So I do really like that she's got a really good ingredient in the top, but then kind of looking, she's got, some quartz powder, amethyst powder, ruby powder, gold. Gold has been known as an irritant to the skin. Now let's see, we do have some bad alcohols in here, like some drying alcohols and stuff, which is not the best. I have briefly mentioned the difference between good versus bad alcohols in the past, but good alcohols essentially are like fatty alcohols. So they're meant to be non-irritating to the skin and actually beneficial. Then we have bad alcohols that are like the drying kind. So the ethanols, um, alcohol just listed by itself, benzyl alcohols. So benzyl alcohol, which is a bad one, is in the serum here. We do have the rose fruit extract, which is also in the um, magic cream from Charlotte. So that's kind of making a lot of sense. Then we have kind of in the middle of the ingredient list as well, we have perfume slash fragrance. Perfume slash fragrance is never a good thing. Basically, it's just writing in that there's something in here that smells good. And they do put fragrance in the ingredient list listed like that because often companies don't want to reveal their like unique concoction to make something smell good. So by like manufacturing standards, they don't have to enlist that because that's technically secret sauce. So they just can write perfume or fragrance and be done with it. But we don't know what perfume or fragrance is in here either. So that's kind of something to consider. And then kind of going all the way down, we do have some of those citrus essential oils once again, but the azorbic acid that is the vitamin C is the most surprising being way at the bottom. <laughs> so when she talks about like the breakthrough ingredients in here, she says expertly blended in a high performance elixir to give your skin a magic gym workout. I don't know, you guys know I love Charlotte Tilbury, but that is really cheesy. Like I love her makeup, don't get me wrong, you guys know that. 
but a magic gym workout is so <laughs> funny to me. It's just kind of weird. I don't know. The polyglutamic acid, which is in here, that is a hydration powerhouse. That's something that she's talking about. That is true. It is more hydrating than hyaluronic acid, but I'm going to kind of see where it is on the ingredient list as well, because that's another thing to know. Polyglutamic acid, where are you? Polyglutamic acid is at the middle <laughs> of the ingredient list as well. So not close to the top. I would say out of all the active ingredients that she's really listing in here, I think that the niacinamide or the vitamin B3 is going to be the ingredient that you're going to see the most impact with because of where it is in the ingredient list. I feel like for myself, I have certain goals for my skincare and adding fragrance is not one of them, whether it is in a fragrant perfume form or in a essential oil form. And that does unfortunately eliminate a ton of skincare products that are available to people like me. So if you're looking for anything just off the shelf, nine times out of 10, it's gonna have fragrance or essential oils or both. And for me, that's a decision that I've made, which is why looking at the ingredient list, I don't have to test it to know it's not going to be for me. What are your thoughts on this magic serum? I would love to know you guys. I'm always very curious to know your thoughts. I figured I would present this information to you so that you can make an informed decision as well. And until my next one, guys, take care. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys. But so if there's a light inside of us, it shows the way.